Let's get it cracking, YouTube. What's good, world? It's your boy, Mastermind Mind, and this is another weekday drop. This is the Valentine's edition, the special love edition. Listen, man, we're going to be uh, talking about some things, man, and a uh, big shout out to the home team, Prodigy, man, and big shout out to the big brother, Hip Hop Gamer, man. We had an amazing episode, man. Shout out to Ace Gaming. I had them on, on the last episode also. Uh, shout out to my homie Q. Had them on the episode, man. We just been hot all week with episodes. So we're going to keep the ball rolling, man. Listen, man, be sure to uh, follow your boy Master23Mind everywhere at Mastermind RGTV on YouTube. We are here, we there, we everywhere. Real Gamer, baby, and RGTV, the classic shows, man. You can't forget those. Listen, man, I got a lot of things in here I really want to talk about. I'm going to kind of, I may break it up, you know what I'm saying? But this is the part two of the February weekday drops, you know what I'm saying? So I want to come here and speak about some things because out of the time a bit, bro, man, you know what I'm saying? I was a little bit, oh, hmm. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, I know that, but hmm, think about it that way. But check this. I gave Sony a lot of heat. Hey, look, man, y'all see Sony, Sony on the shirt. You know what I'm talking about? It's, it's the love day, baby. Love edition. That's why I said that. I gave Sony a lot of heat on the beginning of February weekday drops. You dig what I'm saying? So we're going to come in here and kind of show them a little bit more love, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the podcast didn't quite... Uh, reveal correctly with current time of things and the reason i say that we're gonna talk we're gonna dive into it you know what i'm saying but a lot of things bro was saying but he was like playstation is not badly going out of bed or anything like that i was like no, no i wasn't really saying that but playstation got some things we mad we mad we got playstation got some things that they need to fix but maybe they'll fix it in the future but listen man we're gonna talk about it man because the news is out playstation look man made over 8.8 .8 billion more than xbox in 2022 that is huge. Now, listen, a lot of times I, I come here with the perspective of like uh, the future outcome, not necessarily the current outcome of things. And I'm very passionate about a lot of this stuff, man. So you dig what I'm saying? <sighs> I've been in a lot of Xbox rooms, man. And these Xbox uh, fanboys and Xbox gamers be talking bad and spicy about PlayStation, man. <laughs> But man, y'all already know, man, I'm rocking with the home team. I owned every PlayStation generation console from PS1, 2, 3, 4, PSP. Like, I've had all of the PlayStation consoles, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we, we were a huge PlayStation fan, man. So, uh, I was speaking to some gamers, man, and some people, some of my folks was like, hey, man, you, you, you did kind of, you kind of went in on, you, you went in on PlayStation, how you go in on Nintendo? <laughs> And I don't want that, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to come in here, man, and show PlayStation some love, man, because that's my home team, man, and that's my favorite. You dig what I'm saying? So listen, man, PlayStation is also uh, developing, um, rumors are going around, they're developing some wireless earbuds for the PS5. Hey, man, listen, when I seen that, I was like, okay, I like what I see. Check this out. You got that. For those is on YouTube, y'all can see, I talk with my hands a lot, and I'm showing you this uh, this Apple, um, Apple case. So these Apple earbuds... If they're anything like the Apple earbuds, that'd be really dope. Something else would be really cool is if you can use them uh, with your phone and your PlayStation console, just regular Bluetooth heads, headphones or whatnot. That'd be really cool, too. I'm going to tell you how much of a Sony fan, how much of a Sony fan I really am. Listen, man, I had the Sony headphones, the Sony hat, the Sony shirt. I'm Sony down, baby. You know what I'm talking about? Sony undershirt, up under the jacket. Like, I'm Sony everything. So, I said it to say, these earbuds, if they're anything like the Sony headphones back in the day, the big, like, Sony made some headphones look just like these, the ones I got on. If they're anything like those, but they're just smaller, like the uh, Apple earbuds, yo, banger. I may have to pick them joints up, yo. You know what I'm saying? So, that's big, man. And I, I was happy to see that because um, it also something else to be cool. I'm thinking now the 3D audio. If you get with those head with those earbuds, if it's some kind of way, I'm sure they're going to have the 3D audio. If they can keep that same experience uh, with the PlayStation um, head headphones, the, the PS5 headphones, if they can, and those have like the special 3D audio, whatever, and those headphones, if they're able to take that experience and put them into a smaller earbud, that's going to be fire. Because think about it. A lot of great games like for Ben West, um, Last of Us even sound really good. 
uh, through, through the 3D audio and things. God of War sound like a lot of these games sound really good 3D audio. My f- biggest impression on for us for Ben West playing for Ben West with the 3D audio was amazing. You can hear everything in the joint show. So I'm hoping that you know if we can get some small earbuds with 3D audio immersed into it. <laughs> Let's get it, baby. And I tell I tell you all all the time, man, immersiveness is everything. So if we can bring a great sound immerse immersiveness to the gameplay experience, that's going to be great. Because what that does is that makes us want to play again, even after we beat the game. I would definitely play for Benton West again, uh, fully 3D audio, because at times, you know, I go switch in and off of 3D audio. But that's one game you can really get fully immersed in with the 3d audio sound so especially games like scary games like resident evil whatnot banger man speaking of resident evil we ain't far away baby resident evil 4 remake is on the way and i can't wait man listen the graphics look amazing i seen some more shots man we so close to beating this god of war but i'm telling y'all right now i'm not getting resident evil 4 until i beat god of war Maybe not fully complete beat all the Valkyries and all that. I just want to beat the game so I can have these conversations with all my other gamers about what happened at the end or whatever. But I am close. Follow your boy on Twitch. Master 23Mind. You know what I'm saying? But um, Resident Evil 4 Remake will be the next game I pick up. You know what I'm saying? Um, This Hogwarts Legacy. I was going to wait till I talk about it. But that's that's a game that I, I may have to pick up. Probably before Resident Evil 4 Remake. Maybe. Maybe. But number one game streaming on Twitch right now, man. It was at, at the time. This is probably last week when it first dropped. But it was at uh, 1.28 million views. The number one single player game that was streaming on Twitch. That's crazy. It made history. Yo, a lot of the fanboys is going crazy. So, shout out to Hogwarts Legacy, man. And shout out to everybody that's been playing Hogwarts Legacy, too. Hopefully, I can get... Um, I don't know his gamer tag, so I'm not gonna, I'm not even going to shout him out yet. But hopefully, I can get one of the homies. Uh, he's, he's a big Twitch streamer or whatnot. He's playing, he's playing some Hogwarts Legacy. He's enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? So, I like to hear different perspectives from different gamers. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, come on and show. Come on the show. If y'all want to talk about some games, express show, you know what I'm saying, passion for these games you play, come on the show. Let's talk about it, man, because I got a lot of passion and a lot of different perspectives and different views, past, present, and future perspectives about different consoles, games, and all. So, hey, come on the show. Let's talk about it, man. Going back to this uh, Mo PlayStation, man. So, I seen this tweet. I'm scrolling online. I seen this tweet. Uh, someone tweeted out uh, something about PlayStation, Guinness World Record, gay PlayStation, Certified PlayStation as the best-selling console, uh, basically the best-selling home video uh, console in history. When I seen that, I said, oh, man, wrong time to criticize Sony. (laughs) Wrong time to give Sony the flack and the heat when all of this good information and things is coming out. And here I go on the podcast, Sony, you're you're ruining us. (laughs) wrong time man so uh once one thing the homie said he was like uh and i, I never forget that man it's something i thought about he was like um there's a bag waiting for you but you can potentially mess it up um you know with the things you say doing your content or whatnot yo that hit me yo and i'm like oh man i thought about what i said with sony i was like yo I don't want my bag to be messed up with none of these, <laughs> none of these guys, none of these big players in the industry, man. Cause I know, I know who he rolled with, you know what I'm saying? And, and the rooms he's in, he's in a lot of big rooms. You dig what I'm saying? So we don't want to mess none of those opportunities up. So for all the big wigs or anybody else that's seen this trying to put uh, politically correct me or whatever, listen, man, ain't no hate for none of them, man. It's all love. You dig what I'm saying? But I definitely, I thought about that, man. And, you know, correct the crit, uh, criticism is taken. You know what I'm saying? I'm humble enough to take that. You dig what I'm saying? Because I definitely don't want to mess no bag. I need all the bags you can get. Give me all the love and bags. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, when, I, when I heard that, man, I thought about that, man. I said, man, what if PlayStation had a bag for me, man? And I just messed it up with that podcast. <sighs> PlayStation, I got the red on for y'all today, man, because I love y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to mess no bag up with y'all, man. So, you dig what I'm saying? Hey, I got a annoying neighbor down below with a crazy dog that just barks, and he sound like he's just dying barking every time. (laughs) 
<laughs> but uh, that's crazy. But I definitely don't want to miss no bag over PlayStation, man. So PlayStation, salute. Call your ex up on the phone. Tell them let's talk, man. We got a lot of uh, passion to express for you guys, man. But I will dive back in and push on some of this stuff I've been saying, man. Like, example, the PlayStation View, man. It would have been perfect. It would have been perfect, man. PlayStation used to have um, used to have their stuff. You know what I'm saying? With the P- they attempted the PS3 back in the day. Uh, PS3 into the TVs. You know what I'm saying? So what Xbox is doing with Samsung, it's not nothing new. PlayStation did that back in the day. If they can bring that back, that'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? So, and something else the homie said, he was like, you know, a lot of times when, uh, from the fan, um, from the fan perspective, we don't see everything because, you know, we're not in the industry like that. But on the business side, when they see everything, you know what I'm saying? It may get to us later on, but they've not already seen it. So PlayStation could be doing some of this stuff because they're cooking up something new. I do believe that, you know what I'm saying? You know, possibly they is cooking up something new. And us over here just with the passion and with the fans, we boots on the ground with all the gamers. You know, we don't see everything. But I will give you my future prediction of a lot of things. And I'll be right, I'll, I'll be right with a lot of future predictions. You dig what I'm saying? So never saying that uh, PlayStation is going anywhere or is dying or anything like that. But I do believe that, man, a lot of the things that they've been doing, I feel like it's been shooting us, us fans in the foot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like the PlayStation Collection situation. I don't know why y'all taking it away, but hopefully it's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the PlayStation View situation. I don't know why y'all took that away, but I hope it's a good thing. You know? Um, backwards capability. I hope it's a good thing. <laughs> like there's so many like true factual things. I'd be in these Xbox rooms, man, and be hearing what they be saying. And I'm like, mm, you got a good point. You know what I'm saying? PlayStation do need to kind of bring some of this stuff back. You know what I'm saying? But everything can't be all perfect and all bloom and groom um, on each side. You know, each side going to have the ups and downs for another up and down for Xbox. I got to go in here and, and dig on it. And I don't own an Xbox console, but I do own, well, did own Xbox Game Pass. So Xbox Game Pass is um, harming software sales. That's very interesting. But if you think about it, that makes sense. Think about it. They're giving away a lot of value on Xbox Game Pass for a lower price. So if they drop 500 games, we're going to example, they drop 500 games. Um, 480 of those games are possibly 300 of those games going to probably be on Game Pass for free. Or for not well for free technically, but each subscriber, uh, I don't know the price off the top of my head, but each subscriber, you know what I'm saying, that's gonna be the mark versus each of those subscribers could have paid 50, 60 bucks for the game. When each subscriber, let's say if you got 30 million subscribers, they're 30 million subscribers. I'm just getting your estimate. I don't know the Xbox Game Pass's prices off the top of my head right now. Um, shows how I freak style everything. Um, let's say 15 bucks, 14, 30 million and 3 million people were playing, paying 14 a month or whatever versus, um, 60, 50 every now and then plus the in-game content, stuff like that. So, you know, it makes sense. I can see how the sales would be going down. Now it's a good thing for the gamers, but not for the company. So it's one of those things to where. We see PlayStation pulling some things back from the gamers, but good for the company. We see Xbox pulling some things from the company, but good for the gamers. So it's an interesting telltale story here we got going on. And meanwhile, Nintendo is kind of in the middle. Listen to this. Shout out to the homie on Twitter, uh, Next Gen Player. He's he, he's a great journalist or whatever, man. Be retweeting out a lot of good stuff on Twitter or whatnot. I follow him too. I retweet a lot of the stuff he'd be saying. Uh, one of the things he spoke about, I'm just kind of briefly cut through some of it. Nintendo Switch Online is the most compelling service because it enhances Nintendo's business model, says DFC. Uh, that's interesting because like I just said, that puts Nintendo right in the middle. So we got the Switch coming up on what? Seven years now? Six, seven. It's been out six, seven years. We need new Nintendo console. I'm going to dive deep into that a little bit later because of Metroid Prime and everything else. We need a new Nintendo console. 
but it's been now six some years or whatnot and with the nintendo um uh direct we just had you know what i'm saying we didn't they didn't announce a new console interesting but you see they're remaking games metroid prime for example looks amazing looks really good legend of zelda they showed more content of that oh, wow it's still coming out in may they ain't pushing it back we, even though we, okay i'm telling y'all they're gonna do and i said this on a previous podcast uh with the wii u when the wii u came out and then the switch came out the legend of zelda um what was was it breath of the wild i think it was breath of the wild but i, I know because i got it over here well all my cases over there but it's, a, it's in the middle of a case i can't see it but uh, it, I got it for the Wii U and that's right around the time the Switch had just came out now if we do get a new Nintendo console you think this new Legend of Zelda is not going to be available for the new console and if it's not available you, sh- you, you know, they're going to make it backwards capability two, th- two key things that Nintendo uh, you want to keep your eye on for the next Nintendo console so since these games are like small basically like sd cards a key factor is okay how is nintendo gonna create a physical how they're gonna create their physical product again us on the gamer side with all this passion we don't know what they got coming but people that's in the industry probably already seen a prototype of the new nintendo console you know what i'm saying so they know but of course they can't say anything so when 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 we're doing when I'm creating my content and we we over here we doing our thing man hey we my my perspective my view may change after the show so that that creates another show or my perspective of view may change next month you know what I'm saying but for right now gotta stand on it so the key thing you want to keep your eyes open for is how they're gonna create a, a, their new physical console. Will it take CDs? Will it go back to the the small CDs or the SD uh, looking games or whatnot? Will it go back to that? If not, will they be completely digital? Because Nintendo has been working on the network services. Network services is getting much better. So that's a possibility. You know what I'm saying? Will they take the approach, uh, you know, completely cloud like Xbox or whatever? But also... Will they make it like a switch too, to where you can backwards capability with the physical uh, product and a disc or whatever? We don't know. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting to see. But I guarantee you games like this Metroid Prime remake, because when it drops, it's going to sell. I'm telling you it off top. Metroid Prime is one of those. The games like Mario, Metroid, Zelda, um... Those are like the three main characters that see Nintendo got more characters in history, you know what I'm saying? Than a lot of them. Like I can name three: PlayStation, God of War, Uncharted, um, 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 so many. The Infamous game that's PlayStation exclusive. You feel what I'm saying? For Ben West, that's four. Last of Us, that's five. Like they got triple A titles, hits, characters, history already down. Current history. Nintendo got past history, slash some 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 current history also uh but also they still characters we're still tied to these characters so games like mario metroid zelda uh smash brothers or whatever um um other nintendo characters that i'm not naming but there's plenty of them when these games come out they always do pretty good pokemon pokemon does amazing the sales when pokemon came out did pretty good you know what i'm saying even though it had bugs in the game software glitches or whatnot don't worry. Send out a patch to fix that. Still had glitches. But when a new Nintendo console come out, how will it run it? You know what I'm saying? So I'm interested to see. You think they're not going to make... They're making these amazing games and they're not going to make them available for the next new Nintendo console? Nah, bro. Nah. Nintendo usually been pretty good with backwards capability. Hats off to Nintendo for that. Um... They, they've been pretty good with I mean I'm thinking back back in the day like even now you can play some of the greatest 64 games on your Switch GoldenEye perfect example GoldenEye you know alright decent cool um 
a couple other games, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Pokemon Stadium, even though we need a remake of something like Pokemon Stadium, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they've been pretty good with back capability. Uh, they've always been good with couch co-op type games, you know what I'm saying? They lead the way on that, uh, in my, my opinion. Um, not so good on online games or whatever, uh, but the whole situation with Activision, we may can get on the next Call of Duty or two years from now on a new Nintendo console down the road. So it's a couple of things that Nintendo need to work on, but if they continue to capitalize on what they're already good at, hey, the next new Nintendo console can definitely be a hit. I really do think so. And um, when I was talking to the Brother Hip Hop Gang, man, I asked him about Web3 Gaming. He, he made a valid point, a point that I've always been making on the show. When these three juggernauts get into um, the building, developing, the consoles on the blockchain, then it's a go. It's a go. It's a go. So that's another key factor to look out for the next Nintendo console. If the next Nintendo console partners up with someone like Avalanche or uh, Polygon or whatever, partner with some of these guys, oh, it's a go. Oh, it's it's a go. Whoever's going to be the first to do it, that's going to be the interesting pivot part. Because if Nintendo can come out with uh, the next generation console, backwards capability, blockchain technology, um, what else? It's a couple other things, but I'm just trying to name like the three innovative, very innovative, something new. If they can come out with those three key factors, there's other factors that I'm not naming, but those three key factors, if they can come out with those three key factors, Nintendo may be some to like, yo, Xbox slide over Nintendo back in this thing, <laughs> you know? So, um, and whoever do it next, for example, if Nintendo go with Avalanche, Avalanche and Polygon is one of the two, um, web three gaming blockchains that they're huge. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of games is being developed on Avalanche and, and mostly Polygon. Solana too, also. Uh, but if we if we so if we was breaking it down to three, I would say uh, H Bar is another one. But I don't, they're not as big as Avalanche, Polygon, and Solana. You feel what I'm saying? So if let's say if Nintendo get with Avalanche, yo, game on, baby. But keep in mind. Nintendo has been more of like a couch co-op, like I was saying before, and not so much online, a lot of people coming in. And when a homie was talking about making mods and people, you can, let's say like DLCs or whatnot. Let's say if Nintendo go with Avalanche, people start making DLCs over here on the Avalanche blockchain or whatever. And um, Nintendo come out, Polygon, people making DLCs. The PlayStation on Polygon is going to be more popular, not because of Polygon, but it's going to be more popular because PlayStation has a more bigger online presence than Nintendo. You feel what I'm saying? For us playing on games online. Um, I mean, the, the, the proof and the facts to that is look at games like Call of Duty or any other uh, games that people are playing online. They're playing mostly these games online with PlayStation. You don't see a lot of people really playing uh, Nintendo is more of like, like I said, your couch co-op. It's a, you know they still they still play online, but mostly your couch co-op. But they're not as big as Xbox and PlayStation playing online. So I don't really need a fat chart to really tell you that. But when it get back to my point, if PlayStation pull that off, that's gonna be more popular over there. Not because of Polygon, but because of PlayStation already has a bigger online presence versus Nintendo. They got an online presence, but not as big as PlayStation. But that's going to be the key factor. The next um, out of the three big juggernauts, who's going to be the first to hop on what blockchain, start developing? That's going to be key. That's going to be the key. So when we get Telltale's rumors, hopefully, um, I don't think that. See, it's going to be interesting because regulations and all this other stuff, man. Um we live in, we living in some very interesting times, man, because this stuff on the block to black blockchain technology, man, and, and a lot of stuff that's cooking up, man. Even if we even if we don't get regulations, 
um, or we do or we don't. The technology isn't going anywhere and it's still good. Regardless of the bad actors that you've seen, we're still, the technology is amazing. Blockchain technology is amazing. So when you, man, I, I can I can only see it now, bro. Like <sighs> Nintendo come out and announce a new console and they mention, if they don't mention anything about blockchain technology, I'm telling y'all, it's over for Nintendo. They're not, they're, they're because you, you can't, you can't move forward with a night uh, beginning of 2000 uh, business structure to now the 20, 2023 to 2030. No future technology invented in it. Like, no, nah, it's not going to. I don't I don't know. I, nah, I don't see it. I don't if they don't announce any type of blockchain technology built with a new Nintendo console. I don't see Nintendo doing so well for the next console you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be off to the race of the next console um having blockchain technology and i didn't i don't i didn't look at the patents or who got patents and all that stuff like the homie would say hey man I, oh man we do i'm coming here and just drop it like Leo. you know what i'm talking about so um if they if i'm pretty sure they probably do got patents already but um it's gonna be the race for the next console to who's gonna be built on these blockchains uh, and interesting thing with AI, I still think that I know Microsoft and Xbox is, you know, two separate entities or whatnot. But at the same time, man, when it comes to AI technology, the the juggernauts that's in AI te- AI technology, Google, Microsoft, um, who else? Apple, because Apple got Siri and, and Amazon. Uh, those are like the top four because of data. Data is the number one key factor. Who has a lot of data? Google. Google has a lot, tons of data. That's how they was able to roll out their AI bot just like that. What is the name? Bart or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And plus, before the AI hype even came about, Google been cooking up some AI stuff. Let's not get it twisted now. Google been doing this AI game for a long time. Quantum computer and all that. You don't think AI is, is, is a part of that? Of course. So... With those three, with those four key key players, uh, the lead oh Nvidia can't forget Nvidia. Shout out to Nvidia. I'm, just, I'm snatch my uh, headphones out. Shout out to Nvidia. Can't forget Nvidia. Gotta have five. The five key players in AI uh in AI tech, I mean in 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 uh in yeah AI, is those five. So, you know what, PlayStation could get with Nvidia. So I I, I still think that. Xbox in the, in the next two years, not not knowing what's coming up, but because uh, I'm just looking at it from a standpoint, those five players, Microsoft is there. True Xbox and Microsoft two two different ent- entities, but Microsoft, you, I, I don't I don't see Microsoft just ignoring Xbox. We're not going to share our AI bot and our technology with you guys. No, you, that's your brother. Of course you're going to share it with them. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know, man. Um, it's going to be an interesting two years, next two years, two, three years to come. And technology moves so fast. So you got AI, you got blockchain technology, you know what I'm saying? And not just that, the graphics card, shout out to AMD. AMD doing some amazing, impressive things with their graphics cards. For example, I, I, that's something else I wanted to talk to the homie about. Maybe we'll get them on the show again. We'll we'll talk some AMD. But uh, for example, so AMD, uh, what they're able to do with one of the graphics cards, probably all of them now, but uh, I forgot the name of the graphics card, but they're able to basically uh, make something that's running in 1080p look like it's running in 4K. Similar to what uh, Hogwarts Legacy is pulling off. Hogwarts Legacy, a very 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 beautiful game i'm looking at it on twitch like wow if it looked like this and someone is screaming it imagine how it looks when you're playing it yo it looks good on performance and fidelity yo amazing i can only imagine i can only imagine how it looks on pc running on an amd the top amd graphics card Hey, man, we're going to take a quick commercial break for Anchor. 
Anchor, Anchor be trying to, they be trying to pull the plug on me over here, y'all. We are back after this commercial break with Anchor. We was talking about some AMD, man, and, and, and the amazing things AMD is doing with their graphics cards and how Hogwarts Legacy graphics look amazing. And listen, man, AMD has been stealing the show for the past decade now. They've been in the PS4. The last generation Xbox, now they're in the PS5, now they're in this generation of Xbox. That's 10 years, baby, more than 10 years, honestly. But So for the next console to come about, if AMD secure that deal, you're looking at AMD takeover for the next 10, 20 more years. <laughs> for real, for real, you know. But for its AI tech, man, I can see, I can see either... So the three players I'm thinking about, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA, one of, one of these three guys, if they get with PlayStation to make competition, I'm just going to paint y'all a picture. And I like, I like to have these gaming conversations to paint y'all a picture. These three big players, if one of these three players get with Sony and say, hey, Sony, let us integrate our AI tech with your console, your next generation console. Maybe they can test it out with a PS, uh, a PS5 Pro or something. Let us integrate this into your uh, to create competition for Microsoft. The homie said, "Hey man, you know the industry don't look too well on Monopoly. I, I, I understand that and believe that. I remember back in the day with Apple and Microsoft. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you gotta have competition. What would make great competition? Somebody like those three players I just I just named teaming up with Sony to go against Microsoft and Xbox." Because you got Microsoft with PC, Cloud, and ChatGPT. They can work, they can team up, they can team up with them, with their brother, Xbox. Hey, Xbox, we're going to let you use our AI. The next, the next Xbox console is going to be so, so incredible. We're going to let you use this tech. And any other new tech we got coming out, Xbox is going to have their hands on it first before anybody. We're going to start making exclusive. You're going to see that things are going to, I believe... In the next two years, things are going to start to shift with Xbox. They're, the way they uh, do business with the gaming. Things are going to start to shift. Um, that's just, it just, it just what I believe. Um, so, Nintendo. If, some, if, if the other AI that's in China, if they get with Nintendo, that'd be a good look. But, since tensions with, you know... Tensions with America and China. Eh, I don't know if they get that tech in Nintendo console, and now that Nintendo console is all over, might not look too well. So they would probably have to partner with the AI American. So mm, Amazon, Amazon already got Luna. Remember, it's not necessarily the big three, but if they can get with Xbox, well, I don't see them get. I don't see nobody getting with Xbox but Microsoft. So that's why I keep naming Nintendo and Sony. I, if they get with Nintendo, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? Now, blockchain partners step into play. Solana, Avalanche, Polygon. There's others. There's plenty of others. But those are the top three I'm just picking right now. Let's say, so we know we got Solana bringing out their new phone or whatnot. Mobile gaming is huge. And it's, not, it's, it's, it's still doing good. It's not going anywhere. Mobile gaming is huge. Um, let's say if... Solana get with Nintendo or PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Now you have that deal secured on AI and blockchain technology. That's going to be key to where partnership and collaboration with future technology is going to be a banger. That's going to be the thing that's going, okay, now we got some good competition going on. And at that point, you just got game developers or whatnot uh, just kind of, you know, working on different ones. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to be cool. Um, the, the situation with Xbox and um, the Activision case, um, I don't really want to dive too deep into that because I'm, I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of briefly talking about it. But I hate that, you know, they're, they're going to trial and all that. Like, man, just let them. It's going to happen. Due time is going to happen. But just let them just go and do their thing, man. Like, $8.8 billion more than Xbox in 2022? Come on, PlayStation. 
leave these guys alone. <laughs> leave these guys alone. But that's 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 my um that's my full like deep elaboration breakdown of AI and blockchain technology because those are the two hot key pillar words you're gonna hear a lot this year. AI blockchain technology. Um one more thing. We will be getting another Call of Duty this year. Interesting. So rumors that it's gonna be um like a couple years ahead of Modern Warfare 2, after after Modern Warfare 2, uh, but it may be like an add-on to it, like a premium package or something. I, I don't know um how they're gonna do that. It's interesting because they, they swore up and down, you're not gonna we're not gonna do another Call of Duty for the next two years, or we're gonna take a break, or set and set up, blah 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 all that. We get another Call of Duty this year. But I mean I, I and, and I even seen uh how Modern Warfare 2, you know, I was like, yo, I can see Modern Warfare 2 adding on some stuff, you know what I'm saying, keeping this, running this for two years straight, you know what I'm saying? I can see them doing that. So I don't know, this is gonna be interesting. We we gotta get more they didn't, it has not a lot of details out about it yet, but we'll get some, you know. Uh, the release date still going to be around November, around that time or whatnot. But we'll get more information probably later this year. We're going to talk more about it. But how do I feel about it? Mm, I don't know, man. I don't know because I'm a Call of Duty fan. Call of Duty is usually pretty pretty interesting, uh, you know, when it drops. So it, it may be good. It, I mean, I'm pretty sure it will. I love Modern Warfare 2. It's a little buggy, but who knows? Uh, who, who knows, man? Uh, I want to go back to Nintendo for a little bit. I I got some stuff wrote down on the board. I didn't get into my deep breakdown with AI and blockchain, man. You see the passion. I just love to talk about this stuff, man. But I want to go back to something. Game Boy Advance games is coming to Nintendo Switch Online. That is what's up. Game Boy Advance. That's going to take me to my next topic about handheld games. This was supposed to be in a short show. This actually turned out to be a good long show, but it's all right. Y'all hanging on in now. Put your seatbelts on. So that's really good because Game Boy Advance has some really dope games on it. You know what I'm saying? And again, portable. Portable. Yo, so last podcast episode, um, I was talking about, you know, should um, a lot of people are saying, IG, IGN was also saying that, this would probably be a good time for PlayStation to come back out with a handheld because we see that, you know, on the go is really being a more popular thing now. Cloud gaming, mobile gaming, dope. You know what I'm saying? And for to see Nintendo make this move with Game Boy Advance and um, pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? I like to see that. Especially, like, I would go back and the only game I can think of right now off the top of my head it's like Pokemon. Pokemon on Game Boy Advance was the game back in the day, man. That was my game, yo. I had a couple other ones, but Pokemon on Game Boy Advance, that was the game, man. So I can, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I would like, I would like for PlayStation to come out with a handheld. They may not. I would like for them to. The reason is because if we can take these great games on PlayStation, these AAA title games on PlayStation, on the go, Check this. Paint, I'm finna paint another picture for you. It's passion, baby. If PlayStation would have kept PlayStation View, come out with the handheld. <sighs> Imagine being able to watch your shows and watch Last of Us on a device. You know what I'm saying? On, on a handheld device. Take it on the go. Play these AAA title PlayStation games. And look at these amazing titles. All on all in the PlayStation ecosystem. Now that picture I just painted you sound really good for all my PlayStation fans out there. All my PlayStation fans is like, we need him as a spokesman. <laughs> it's uh that that would be amazing. And the graphics look look at PSP uh PSP and PSP Vita looked amazing back in the day. Good graphics. I can only I can only imagine seeing the next handheld PlayStation looking really good too you know what i'm saying looking really good and like i said man and packing this stuff into it on the go yo you just gave us portability to one of the best generational games 
consoles of all time. Let's go. Like, yeah, it'll be dope if PlayStation come out with a handheld. Um, check this though. The the PSVR two. Now it's getting it, some people got it early, you know, for all my people in the industry or whatever, but um price is too high, Jack. Everyday gamer can't afford that. Too high. You know? VR, uh we are, you know, VR um is, is definitely a thing, but I think AR is really the next thing. So diving back into the technology, let me get into my technology bag for a second. I'm gonna need some animes or something in here. Diving back into my technology bag bag for a second. Microsoft got the HoloLens. You remember that? So you got the HoloLens, that's AR and VR tech. Amazing. Apple working on the headset also. AR though, not just VR, AR. You got PlayStation, probably one of the best VR headsets that's gonna be out, probably. But will it be, will it have capability to do AR? No, I don't think so. Just VR. That's what they messed up at. You got to give us more value on top of the value that you're giving us. Now, it's I mean I don't I personally haven't had my hands on it. Maybe it could be a firmware update, some push out. Hey, we're gonna make it AR. I don't know. But I feel like if PlayStation were to drop a VR and an AR headset. Name it VR2, keep it the name or whatever you're going to name it. But if it would have been AR, I think it would have did better. I think it, I think it really would have did better. You got, you again, Xbox and Microsoft, two different entities. But I do see Microsoft playing alone better with Xbox in the future. And if they don't, that's not a smart move on Microsoft or Xbox. Uh, so it's, it's at their best to play along with their brother, Xbox. <laughs> so let Xbox have ChatGBT and HoloLens. Make it compatible for the next Xbox or whatever you're going to do. That'll be dope. Apple, Apple Arcade. Mm, pretty decent. I put that in the competition with Netflix gaming and all that, you know, and Amazon Loom, Luma console. RIP to Google Stadia. You know what I'm saying? Um... Great cloud uh, concept, but um, bonjour. <laughs> but um, that'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? So, play. Is it too late that you know? I mean, is it too late for the VR train? Mm, I wouldn't say it's too late, but AR is definitely better. Then you got the metaverse and all this situation coming on. You know what I'm saying? Coming on through, man. Metaverse with AR and VR tech, much better than Metaverse VR. You getting value on top of value. They should they should have made it AR man, but it's all cool. Um, I think that's really all I got about for for this. Some of this other stuff on the board was just kind of oh one more thing we got to talk about this man. Listen, a lot of a lot of next generation of cars will have consoles in them. Interesting. How the hell are we finna drive and game at the same time? Self-driving tech. AR, artificial intelligence. Man, the technical world is getting crazy, y'all. We finna have cars driving by themselves. And for those in the backseat, you're gonna be able to play Nintendo. You're gonna be able to play a Xbox. You're gonna be able to play a PlayStation in these cars. Sony is also working on a car, too. It probably won't come out to like 2025 or 2030 or whatever. But for the mere fact we're getting consoles in these cars is crazy, yo. How do I feel about that? Oh, I'm all for it. <laughs> I would love to play my PlayStation and have my car drive me to point A to point B. And I'm just playing some God of War or something. Let's go. I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go. So when I seen it, I was like, what? Uh, I'll take it. I'll take the PlayStation car first, though. <laughs> Yo, man, it's been real, man. Um, that's all I got for y'all really today, man. I, I really wanted to make this show pretty short, but I felt like I had to come in here, man, and um, kind of speak on some things after having a show with Hip Hop Gamer, man, and, 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 and some of the stuff that I spoke about on a previous episode before having him in 
I was going heavy in on Sony, man. So I had to come in here and make it right, man. Because those that don't know, man, if you're new to the show or whatever, I'm a huge Sony fan. And I ain't trying to mess up no Sony bag that I got in the future waiting for me, baby. So, hey, I'm a huge Sony fan, man. If y'all only really knew, I'm a huge Sony fan. So, man, I've been a Sony fan since I was in diaper shows. <laughs> Make believe, baby. So, you know, um, love is love, man. And uh, y'all stay tuned for more. You know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna, to we gonna be dropping some. We, we ain't going to let the pressure up off y'all, man. We've been dropping shows last week. Man, we had like four, four shows back to back. Then we had a homie hip-hop game on the show. Oh, man. That was that was a milestone in the episode for me, man. I've been wanting to do that. I, I've been trying to get him on the show for, for a long time. he been agreed to come on the show, but we just never had that time. We could never can get in alignment right. You know what I'm saying? Now, hey, it was a full boom, so hey. Speaking into existence, and that's what we did, man. I got the brother on the show, man, and we had a good conversation and a good time, man. So, shout out to the brother, Hip Hop Gamer, man. Hopefully, we can have him back on the show. And um, shout out to everybody that uh, came through and rock. Shout out to Ace Esports, man. I had had the brothers from Africa on the show too, man. Hey, we got to get them back on the show. And plus, all the other great players, man, that's competing over there in their tournament and everything. We got to cook up some more shows, man. Prodigy, let's make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, Shout out to, uh, to my homie Q. I had him on Hogwarts, talking about Hogwarts Legacy. Man, I may have to go ahead and pick that game up, man. That game looking real good, man. But uh, we got to finish beating this God of War. Love is love, man. Y'all be sure to follow your boy Master23 Man and Master Man RGTV on YouTube. We out, folks. Banger, YouTube.